Hey everyone, welcome back to Code with Row. In this video, I want to be going over the, some of the spells in the ACF Ultimate sample. Let's get started. So this is the request that I've been getting a lot. It's how to make some new spells and stuff. And I'm going to be going over that along with the first few spells. So at the start, you're given four spells that are from five, six, seven, eight. And let me just show you an order. So this is five, it's a fireball. Six is frost. Seven is a heal spell. And then eight is going to be a little AOE thing. And then you click eight again or hold it to actually use it. So I hold eight for a little bit and then I let go in order to use this like raining fire type stuff that does a ton of damage. So now quickly going over the spells, what you're going to want to do is open up your ACF ultimate player character, double click into it. And then when you scroll down under the components, you're going to see a ACF spell manager BP. And this is going to have your spells in it. So it's going to be an array filled with different actions. So you'll see action.spells.fireball, action spells, frostball, bless, which is your heal, and then media rain, which is that our eight key right now. And if you go to the parent, you'll go to the ultimate sample. And then you want to go to the parent again to go to the full player BP. And in here in the event graph, your event, you're going to see these enhanced input actions, ACF quick spell input one, two, three, four, right? And you can leave these as priority low. So basically when you click your ACF quick spell input one, which is our five key, it'll play the first spell in our array over here. So that's why five is set to fireball. So if I exit this, or if I actually delete this, and then I re-add the fireball, now all my spells that I had, they're going to move down one. So now my five, when I hit play and hit five, it's going to be my frost now. And eight will be my fireball because that's added last. So it's pretty useful. Um, the array you have it in order will, the order you have it here will be your quick spell input one, two, three, four in that order with your keys being five through eight, which is also stated on our ACF keybinds. And if you don't know where that is, go to the map, double click the player controller class, open it up. And then over here, you'll see mapping context. And you can just open this to see all your mappings. And then you will see your ACF quick spell input one, two, three, four, which are our keys here. And you can change this to whatever you want. And so as you can see, a lot of people struggle with that eight key is because it's a hold and release. So you can just, you can just go ahead and change that. So now let's actually create a spell. So what I'm going to want to do is go over to my content. And for this example, I've imported some um, animations. I have a ton of stuff that I've gotten for free. I'm going to use either the advanced magic FX 12 or 13. I think in this case, I'm probably going to be using 13. So I'll go ahead and right click and under blueprint class, I'll search for a ACF spell projectile BP and I'll double click this and I'll call this maybe like tornado spell or something. Yeah, tornado spell is fine. I'll double click into it. And what I'm going to want to do is set the static mesh. And for this, I'll just set it to SM burden projectile wisps and hit compile. And it'll add the material by itself. And the reason why I'm doing this is because this static mesh is given in the ACF folder. And it already has my start and end sockets, which is going to determine my damage trace. And then the projectile start, which is where it's going to shoot out from. And now under my mesh component, while this is selected, I'm just going to add a particle system or cascade particle system component. Just leave the name as particle system. And then I want to add a particle template. So in this case, I'll do something like one of those tornado storm things that we saw. And for this one, I'll do a firestorm. And you can still see that weird purple thing that we added here for the static mesh. I'm just going to look for the visibility and turn mesh comp off so we don't have to see that. I'll hit compile and save. And now we want to edit some of the projectile movement, see how this is going to work. And I'll just open up all my tabs. Oh, wow. I didn't even notice there was a homing projectile type thing. So yeah, this looks good. I'm just going to leave it at 400 and five or 4,000 for the initial speed and 5,000 for the max speed. This is just so it's going to shoot out the tornado. And now for the collision comp, you're going to want to make sure that the trace is here. So under damage traces, I'm just going to add, I'll call this trace. And then we'll add some of the effects here. So in this case, 
I'm gonna have this do 100 damage. I'll do something like, hope this is not too loud. Rip my ears. Okay, I'll just do the fireball Q sound. And I'll change my socket. Remember, it's case sensitive. I'm gonna capitalize my S and E for my start and end because that's what it is in our sockets over here. And then for the damage type, I'll probably, I'll change this to the ACF fire damage type. And if we click on this to take a look at it and open this up, we can see our parameter influences. So we're using the spell damage attributes and the defense attribute for the damage scaling. And yeah, this looks pretty good to me. So I'll hit compile and save. Let's say you wanted to add some sort of status effect to your spell. So for example, if I want this to do some damage over time or something, I would just go over to my event graph. And what you're going to want to do is click on the collision comp, collision component, scroll all the way down to events and select on actor damaged. So when the other actor gets damaged, the one who's receiving the damage, you're going to drag this out and do try apply status and connect the damage receiver to the target actor. And now we're gonna promote the chance and the status effect to a variable because we wanna grab this from somewhere else. So I'll right click, promote this to a variable and call chance. It'll be a float called chance. And then I wanna promote this status effect to a variable and it will be the ACF base status effect, which is a class reference. And now you'll see my tornado spell under the material. There's no tab just yet, but now because I've added this, and then when I hit compile, you'll see this default gets added in. And I can leave chance at one. And then the status effect, I can, let's go over and create another one. So I'll leave my tornado spell empty and let's create another status effect. So now what I'm gonna wanna do is go over to my content. I'll right click, create a blueprint class. And under all classes, I wanna do an ACF damage over time BP. And I'll call this something like ACF underscore burning status underscore BP. So I'll double click to go into that and you'll see like base damage, damage type class and so on. So I'll change the damage type class to ACF fire damage type because that's what, the, what we're working with. And I'll change my status effect tag to RPG dot status effect dot burned. And I'll leave this at 50. I'll set the duration to 10 and the trigger count to five. So this means you'll be taking 50 damage over 10 seconds and it'll tick five times. So in this case, I'll tick for 10 damage every five seconds. So I compile and save. And now what I'm going to want to do is on my functions, I'm going to override the on status effect starts and I want to override the on status effect ends. And then I want to override the use or on trigger status effect. And I want to add the on trigger status effect just because I want the I want a material to apply while the status is affecting. And my on status effect start and end will be able to tell this on trigger when it's going to start and end. So what I'm going to want to do is after my parent for the on trigger status effect, I'm going to add a is valid. And then I will also get my get component by class, get component by class. I'm going to uncheck the context sensitive and it'll be for my actor and I'll just connect the return value to this input and then I'll drag out my target and do a get character owner and you want to make sure that it's targeting the ACF base status effect because that's what we're working in right now so ACF base oh this one so if I hover over this it'll say a target is ACF base status effect so I'll click on this and now for the component class I want to make sure I select the ACF effects manager BP or ACFFX Manager Component BP. Go ahead and select that. I'll hit Compile and Save. And when it's valid, I want to be able to add a material overlay for the duration. And I'll connect the return value of the Git component by class into my target. And I want to promote this new material to a material called, I'm going to rename this to Fire Overlay. And this should be connected to a material interface type and looks like when I hit promote to variable it is referencing a material interface type so I'll hit compile and now when I go back to my class defaults I'll be able to select some sort of fire overlay so in this case I'll do something like candle flame 01 inst this might look really weird because it's probably not for not for taking damage it's just a candle flame but let's try it out anyways for the icon, I'll also select something fiery. 
I'll leave this as 50 AC of fire type. Perfect. And now what I'm going to want to do is go back to my tornado spell and under my status effect, I'm going to want to bring, I want to, I'm going to want to set it to my ACF burning status BP. And now I'm going to go to my ACF actions component, which is on my ultimate player. And under action set, I'm going to hit this magnifying glass to find it and double click on ACF actions. And now you'll see a bunch of actions and I'll just hit this plus sign and scroll to the bottom and I'm going to add a, I'll do a launch spell animation for the montage. And then I'll select the ACF spell projectile action. And now I want to create a tag, maybe something like actions dot spells dot fire tornado. And I'll click this plus sign and then I'll do the source for the default gameplay tags. And I'll just click this to select it. So I compile and save for the actions. And then after you add this to your actions, just make sure you click the action drop down, expand ACF, and then your projectile class will actually be whatever you created. So in my case, it is the tornado spell. And if you see, for example, for this one, for the frost ball, if I just open this up, it'll do the it'll be the ACF Frostball projectile BP. And then the launch socket names are right hand socket, left hand socket. And I'll just make sure the same one is for me since I'm using the sample. And this looks good to go. So I'll hit compile and save. And now when I go over to my character, I'm gonna to want to go to my ACF ACF spell manager. And now in my array of spells, I'm gonna change this from the fireball to my fire tornado. And now when I hit compile and save and I click play and I'll hit eight, once it stops lagging, it will shoot out that fire tornado. And it'll be at a very odd angle, but that's just because I haven't changed the physics of it. And now let's try it on a enemy just to see that it is good, gonna do that damage over time. So let's say I landed on this guy. It's actually doing 50 damage <laughs> every two seconds. And yeah, it's a really OP spell. So yeah, he got wrecked. Thanks for watching Code with Row. Like and subscribe. Let me know what you want to see next. I'll be going over more spells and stuff. This is a damage over time spell I specifically went over. And I'll be doing some healing, that movement stuff as well. And yeah, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, and comment below. Patreon's in the description if you want to support my channel. And thank you.